Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Uh, my mom's family immigrated to the United States from Ireland during the Great Potato Famine, so I have a little bit of the Irish in me, which makes me like to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. Chicago turns a whole river green. Why? How? So I did a little research to find out, and here is what I found. People go out on a little boat with an outboard engine and they use a small can, it's really not that much material, of a dye. 2, 3, hydroxy, 6, keto, xanthan, 9, ill, benzoic acid. The guys on the boat who put this dye into the water, they use a flour sifter. A flour sifter and the mixing of the outboard motor is what mixes this dye into the Chicago River. It looks green in the water, but it's an orange dye, bright orange. It's orange, 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 orange. And then it turns, gets mixed with water and it's green. It's a fluorescent dye, like your fluorescent markers. It makes things really visible. It was originally used in Chicago in the 60s, first synthesized in 1871. Wow to track pollutants that were coming into the river. And then somebody who was doing it was like, hey, you know, we use a small amount. This could be used on a larger scale and we could, we could just turn the river green. So the first time they did it, they turned the river green and they used way too much and they turned the river green for a, about a week, more than a week actually. Um, and so they decided, okay, we have to use a little bit less of the dye. So now they use a lot less. It stays green depending on the current of the river for about five hours. Sometimes when it's a very fast current, a lot of water flow, it's not even going to last that long, only a couple of hours. Sometimes it lasts all day and into the next day. Super cool thing though, it's an organic molecule so sunlight destroys it. So it just breaks down when it's exposed to sunlight over time and additionally it gets destroyed by chlorine. It's got some really interesting uses. So it's used in biochemistry for tracking cells in fluorescent mi fluorescence microscopy. It's also used in healthcare applications, figuring out problems with the eyes like with macular degeneration and also looking for brain tumors. It's also used for air and sea rescue. NASA used it for the Gemini 4 uh, sea return um, to be able to find aid location after the craft splashed down in the ocean. And it's also used in river systems to track water flow and to track leaks from uh, industry into water systems. Um, additionally, it's also it, it, when it's used underwater and divers can go down, they can use ultraviolet light to really make it stand out and be able to see stuff that's happening under sea, so like in oil fields. But is it safe? What about the safety? So a great thing is for humans at the concentrations that they're using it in the Chicago River, totally safe. You would have to ingest a whole lot of that river water for it to actually have any negative effect on you. The least lethal dose for humans is about 500 grams for an 80 kilogram person. Um, for wildlife, it would also have to be a much higher dose. So the amount they're using, totally safe. There have been reported adverse effects though. Nausea is the most common, which can be ameliorated with a simple antihistamine. Other allergic effects are really where the adverse effects come from but there have been report reports of cardiac arrest and even death from anaphylactic shock. So, if you're allergic to xanthine dyes, maybe don't go jump in the river. I just think it's neat that Chicago is using it just to turn the river green for a celebration. It's awesome. Anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day everyone. I'm Dr. Kiki. Go enjoy the green in your life.